All right, guys, it's a late, late, late Monday night. I can't sleep, so I forgot to shoot a video. And as far as the lighting, this is as good as it gets, man. Um, I had a Gmart haul video. Gmart is the store I order my comics from. And in that video, I showed my haul and um, had a couple comments in there about people who could not believe that I was all right with this story in particular, the button, okay? with I got all three parts here the fourth chapter I've read online already and stuff and I freaking loved it thought it was very cool I have all the fancy covers here and uh, for the people not in the know or people watching in the future and all this stuff right here uh, last year DC came out with the rebirth sort of a jumping on point for people to come back to the company because they did say they were sorry about the DC 52 and said that it well, they considered it a failure and this was like their apology and stuff but what happened here is they put in enough clues if you will here and stuff and pretty much admitted that the watchmen were coming to the DC universe um, and when I talked about reading the button how much I liked it you know there's a few comments ghost critics popping up in my head big time I've kind of approached him to do a live show maybe in the future if we both can get time at the same time to kind of talk about the button in the watchman in this topic uh, but um, you know why wasn't I mad about it because anybody's watched my channel and my gosh I've been doing this seven eight years now and it was a lot of the I'm kind of like a dinosaur now is what I've kind of realized I feel like a dinosaur I feel like we're having a sit down video actually talking about comics and all the channels out there and a lot of people do a great job and stuff but you know it's a lot about bashing Marvel and stuff, which what's going on, and you know, deservedly so. But anyway, we're going to talk comics here and stay on point. But why am I not upset that the Watchmen are being brought into the DC universe proper? Um, why are why is there not more of an uproar uh, of of it? And if you've watched my channel, you know I'm a huge Watchmen fan. I have a I have a playlist of. Uh, couple years ago where Ghost Critic actually got a bunch of channels that were around then and we each took an issue. I did issue 1 and 12 and we all did reviews talking about it and stuff. Uh, you saw all my stuff. I've got all sorts of stuff around here that's Watchmen posters and the magnets and the movie, you know, the ultimate cut and just every, you know, everything. And, I'm a, and I've read Watchmen since 1988 and stuff, so I've really deconstructed that book and actually found a few things that Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons did in there that you can't get out there and really find. Because let's face it, if you want to do a video and actually talk about comics, Dark Knight and Watchmen are more or less you know, low-hanging fruit. There's so much information out there, it's real easy for you just to pull it and make a video. So I try not to say anything unless I have something to say. but. I don't know why there's not a big uproar. I don't know if there's an actual reason, but I'll come up with a few theories, okay? And I can actually say why I'm not upset by it, okay? But first of all, let's let's think about when Watchmen came out. You know, this came out in '86 into '87 or something like that. So we're going. This is the more or less the 30th anniversary of Watchmen. So of course they'd be brought in. It's also Jack Kirby's 100th uh, birthday this year. So DC sort of celebrating both of those is what I what's, what I think is happening. And with that said, you know a lot of people who read comics or who were there, they're not collecting comics anymore, okay? Or they're not you know really into YouTube. A lot of them are are gone or they're silent. No way to really put a number on it. But with the DC 52 and with what this how terrible Marvel has been for the last two three years. A lot of readers are gone and then you also have the people who were there um, when Watchmen came out you know there's over 30 years ago there's no telling where those people are 30 years is a long time now for the younger people who are watching this the newer collectors or people who are just curious about Watchmen and stuff when Watchmen came out um, what it did was uh, Alan Moore asked the question why would people really shaky cam why would people really get out there and wear costumes and become heroes then he ended up deconstructing the heroes and pretty much heroes got you know lead feet but in the actual art of comics this was everything that a comic book could do in the medium 
it, the Watchmen was designed for you to you get a glass of wine and sit in a chair and just go back and forth flipping through these books and, or, or your trades or your ultimate editions and things like that. And it was just amazing. You would get the same street, you would get pan, nine panel pages and you could pay attention to what was going on down the street in the background and later on you would be on the same street and you would see the same characters you just read in the background and those characters are in the background in the forefront so you had all these things going on at the same time you had symbolism in there he used actual literal tools in there foreshadowing symbolism all sorts of you know this thing was just fantastic you could go back and see a panel and flip back five or six issues and, and find the same panel and, and see how it connects or the same imagery or something it's fantastic so it kind of became a, a, a something sacred and for anything to be done with this book that was complete on its own you know it was considered blasphemy in in collecting so with that said and now you get why it's the heaviness and why it's actually amazing there's not a really huge uproar of people being upset about the Watchmen being pulled into the DC universe and with the history between Alan Moore and DC uh, basically Alan Moore was going to have the rights to Watchmen come back to him once DC stopped publishing and this was before trades really took off nobody had any idea they knew it was going to be big but they didn't know how big so the rights never went back to Alan Moore because they kept it's it's stayed published and it's been used as uh, you know a textbook more or less in colleges. It was on the New York bestseller list forever. You know this this graphic novel, this story. So a lot of people were invested with like creators' rights and taking up for Alan Moore. And over the years, kind of people went shifted back and forth with Alan Moore, what, what with things Alan Moore would say and. The movies of his work being made and being torn up and people were really freaking out like we well, don't mess up the watchman but it's happened we've had the movie come out okay we've had before watchman come out we had these characters with a prequel to watchman um with all of these characters and stuff and i have my silk specter uh signed by uh the artist amanda connor i have adam Q i have the Dr. Uh, Manhattan series uh, signed by Alan Hughes and Heroes Con's coming up, so I'm hopefully get Lynn Wynn to sign all the covers that I have for Ozzy Mendez. So it's already been messed with. I think that's part of the reason is that you can go back and I have a video where I woke up at six in the morning to go to work, was drinking my coffee, played online, found the news that they were announcing before Watchmen, and I made a video of my reaction. I was just like, just real snide about it, you know. So. Watchmen didn't disappear. The movie came out uh, a couple years before that, probably about a year or two before that, and the movie ended up being fantastic once you get the ultimate cut. So they were still there. And then over the years, as things have gone by and stuff, you know, a lot of people thought maybe Watchmen was a little bit overrated or they didn't appreciate it or they were new to reading or whatever and stuff. So time has gone by to where it doesn't feel sacred to the people who weren't there when it came out. That may be another reason. Um, you know, it is a period piece. It happened in, in the 80s. This, this story is set in the 80s. So maybe you had to be there. The other thing is, is uh, that I've kind of mentioned before, uh, as I'm trying to hit like bullet points on this just to get to the point. Um, you know, there's a lot going on with Marvel with a lot of the controversy. It's been talked about enough. You can there's all kinds of videos on it. There are channels out there who just take the Marvel books and they just tell you why they're crap and all the identity politics in there. The creators are absolutely horrible on on Twitter and they try to. It's just you know there's a really bad feeling with Marvel. You know especially with the uh, X Men number one. I think it was X Men Gold that came out that. The artist hid in anti-Semitic and anti-Christian imagery throughout the thing and the terrible things. Just been one PR disaster after the other with Marvel and the things that they're doing with the core characters, if they're even just horrible. Um, so that's like a bad taste in people's mouths. So by the time you get to DC, and DC has apologized to the fans and gave them DC Rebirth and saying we're going to put everything back in about these comics with these characters. Uh, that you loved well they delivered and with their execution of bringing in the watchman to me it's been very respectful uh, 
I've seen two, three, or oh, actually I've seen Sleepy Reader. I told him I'd make a mental note. Sleepy Reader has a video where he mentions Watchmen in it. If I can remember, I'll put a link below if I can find it. And he had some very uh, good thoughts about Jim Lee and well, I mean, Jim Lee, Dan Didio, and uh, Jeff Johns were, it sounded like it got a little personal between them and Moore, and they're kind of getting a kick out of this. Could be. But as far as the story goes in the comics, it's been turned into a mystery. It's something that you can sink your teeth in. And what I've seen is it has made people talk about comics again. It's made me go through here and look for clues like, is this going to be the real Watchmen? Is it a derivative? Uh, there's, it, there's little clues like the Justice Society is going to be coming back. And they found Johnny Thunder. Johnny Thunder has Thunderbolt, who is pink. And he's supposed to be a genie, but he can actually alter reality. He's actually very powerful, you know. And that's the, kind of the joke. This powerful genie is in the hands of a guy who's sort of kind of like Don Knotts or something, you know. He's kind of a goofball. But what I've noticed in the books is like whenever somebody blows up because they've been killed by the blue energy, there's pink smoke. Uh, Superman merged with the pre-crisis Superman came back and merged with the DC 52 Superman and they were playing with the aspects of the old stories that they've touched on over the years Superman red Superman blue so we have two colors that I'm I'm reading into that are meaning something and the Thunderbolt is pink close to red and Dr. Manhattan is blue and I can go on and on with these theories and things like that but that's what's so good they're they're pacing it out over a two-year period um, they're not oversaturating it. They're they're having addressing the mystery. Uh, who is this person that's going on? We're getting ideas that there's characters popping up throughout the DC comics that could be the comedian, or this could be Ozzy and Deus, You know, talking about Doctor Oz, but we're not really sure. You know, um, we know it's Doctor Manhattan, but you know, the rest of it is 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 as obvious as they're making it. Is what I'm trying to say. To me, I feel like we have what's called an orgy of evidence. You know. An origin of evidence. I saw. I love that term because I watched uh, some cop movie or sci-fi cop movie or something one one day where uh, the police showed up and had an anonymous tip and they busted into this hotel room or this apartment and there was a dead body there and all these photographs of what he's done and that in itself should have closed the case. But a good cop knows that's called an origin of evidence. So I feel like there's still going to be a twist. Maybe there will, maybe there won't. But it's it's exciting the way they're they're handling it and pacing it out and letting you know what's going on, letting you know how long you have to hang in there. Is has made comics fun. Compare that to Marvel. A lot of people from Marvel that were into it just couldn't take it, and DC Rebirth sucked them in. And I'm always hearing people or seeing comics where people are saying, "My money's going to DC. I'm buying only two, three Marvel books if they're buying any at all." So that might be one of the reasons there's no outrage. It's actually being handled in a way that it's 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 fun. It's it's fun. We have a mystery. We we're we're going to get a payoff here, which I think is kind of cool. Now, um, so yeah, Marvel Marvel actually has played a hand in having their books the bar so low on them with with what they're doing with it that this is better than nothing for some people. Just to bottom line it, you know. But what, what really got it in for me was Alan Moore was actually talking about DC in an interview years ago. Let me get my stuff out of the way. And um, they kind of brought up the fact, well, how can you be mad at DC? It, was, it felt like they were playing devil's advocate with them. And they were talking about how can Alan Moore be really mad at DC for wanting to do more with these characters when they brought up his League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen is where... Alan Moore has taken a bunch of heroes from Jules Verne and Bram, you know, Bram Stoker's Dracula and everything like that. He, he brings in all these Victorian literary characters and he mixes it up in here with all sorts of novels that are in public domain. And he's done a whole lot with it and it's fantastic. And his comment was, I move the characters forward. I don't try to retcon or rehash or say what happened before that with these characters. He's taking, he's taking what's there trying to stay true to the character and come to some logical plot lines and interactions spread it 
fool. He and the artist have got all sorts of Easter eggs in here where there are websites where you can get annotations for things that are just really deep in here. But his his defense was that he was moving these characters forward. They were doing more with them. I also remember Alan Moore stating that he never thought Watchmen was going to be you know, held in such high esteem, he figured maybe this would, maybe people would try to write something better than Watchmen, and it really blew his mind that it took so long to do if it's been done at all. That's up to you guys for what you read. So with him saying that, and DC also offering to bring him in on like before Watchmen and trying to, or whatever it was, you know, trying to get him back to work on Watchmen, he didn't want to do it, and he didn't want to do anything with these movies. I respect his decisions for you know what he went through with the Watchmen and his beef with DC you know uh, but the button has moved these characters forward and I think that I mean you know maybe the people will be more upset when if this thing falls flat on its face but I don't feel like it's going to it seems to be well thought out and still respectful because they know they're dealing with Watchmen so yeah, that's, it's, it's just a combination of things. It's not an indifference. It's maybe time has gone by, the current state of the comics, that there's something fun out there and it's a mystery and it's being handled real well. We're not being oversaturated. It doesn't feel like they're, it really doesn't feel like a cash grab because they're not throwing out all kinds of all sorts of things Watchmen. Uh, it feels like a legit story going on. You know, and you can't really, you know, when you read comics and stuff, you, you like that. Um, but like I said, for me, the bloom was taken off the rose long ago with before Watchmen in the movie. You know, in, in, in there, there you go. Um, the one thing that does kind of bother me is that I have two playlists of Watchmen in on in my on my YouTube channel. One's private, one's public. The private one is the one where I have seen people more or less, you know, not be impressed with Watchmen or say that it was overrated and, and things like that. Just just for me, just just for me to take in and hear their thoughts about the new generation coming on, keeping up with the kids, man, you know, uh, to hear what they have to say about it. And I've seen two, three people, all of a sudden, they were big Marvelites, and some of them have SJW roots, I'm about to say the word, and things like that, and all of a sudden, they're, they, I've heard them put down Watchmen like I said, say it was overrated and they had their reasons and stuff like that. But I've seen some of them make videos and been on Twitter talking to, and be on Twitter a little bit. I've unfollowed a few of them, uh, not because of this, you know. But all of a sudden they're like wanting DC to just be crucified for bringing in the Watchmen after they've spent years not liking it nor respecting it. And all I can figure out is that Marvel sales are down. Uh, there's a big backlash. The PR, the the, the 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 PR disasters that they've had. That it's almost like they're trying to throw a straw man out there and hoping everybody will burn it in effigy and stuff. Because how dare DC, you know, go in with uh, the Watchmen stuff, you know? And those are just arguments that are exactly what they are. They're the red herrings. They're manipulation. They're you know, trying to get people off Marvel's backs, whatever reason. There's a big cultural change going on right now in in the world and online and things like that. And this just reminds me of the hippies that couldn't stop wearing the headbands and couldn't cut their hair. And, you know, so some people are starting to get left behind, or they're having a little bit of an adjustment period here that they're having a hard time with, and nobody's falling for it. So it's actually a good thing. It's just it's just too too well done. So those are just some of my thoughts. Thanks for checking in. If anybody was even interested in stuff, so carry on, you know, let's see how this pans out.